Why would you want to break barriers? Barriers make you safe, right? Barrier ke is taraf agar hum hai, us taraf agar koi angolan chal raha hai, lot of people protesting on that side, you are safe on this side. But there are people like you who will break barriers. Barriers will come from what? Chaos? With a certain purpose. If today you say, this is the kind of television I don't like, then tomorrow, especially with social media becoming so important, you are the people who will decide what I will watch and what I will not watch. Today the television tells you what to watch. But in your hand you have a mobile, you can see anything that you want. You can go ahead and choose what you want. And this is what is happening. This is very important for you because this is for the first time in India that news is being consumed on the mobile more than it is being consumed <coughs> on television. And people like you are deciding ki future content kaise hoga. So I was a fellow man who was standing in the water, who had nothing else to do. Of course, he had a very serious duty. He was on the border operations. He was on the, under the command of the army. He was in the BSF. He was standing there, but then he was standing there for 14 hours. He was standing there for 14 hours. He was standing there for 14 hours. He was standing there looking at things. And what did he do? He did this. Take a look. We क्योंकि सरकार हर चीज हर समान हमारे को देती है लेकिन उच्च अधिकारी सारा बिक्री करके खा जाते हैं जो कि हमारे को कुछ नहीं इन हालात ऐसी इतने हालात हैं कई बार तो जब हम मुख्य पेट में सोना पड़ता है मैं सुबह का नाश्ता आपको दिखाऊंगा जो कि एक पराठा मिलता है जिसमें ना कुछ भी नहीं है ना अचार है ना सब्जी है सब चाय के साथ दो बहर का खाना मैं आपको दिखाऊंगा कंटिन्यू दाल जो है इसके अंदर सब हल्दी और नमक होगा उसके स्वाद के साथ होगा और क्यों कि मैं आपको दिखाऊंगा मैं फिर कह रहा हूं भारत सरकार सब कुछ देती है भारत सरकार के सब कुछ आता है इसको बड़े बड़े हैं लेकिन वह सब बाजार में चला जाता है कहां तकता है कौन बिक्री करता है इसकी जांच होगी तेज बहादुर यादव बीएसएफ 29 बटालियन इस ऑल सी दिस क्लिप ऑन टेलीविजन राइट is he credible? To you, was he credible? When you saw this video, did you think Sai Bol Raya? You thought that? Is he a journalist? No. Has he done something that no journalist has not done for a long time? Highly, highly paid people, all of us, including myself, he's not done anything like that. Because to go to this post and report, you first need army permission. Army permission you take from here, you go before you leave that place, you have to show what you recorded. So, people like me could never have done this. Here's a man who's a citizen journalist. You all are potential citizen journalists. Now, what is God? God is omnipresent, right? God is everywhere. Where is the citizen journalist in total? The citizen journalist is everywhere. The citizen journalist is omnipresent. With technology today, you record anything about anybody or anything and you just press a button and it's out there for everybody to see. The kind of work that Tej Bahadur Yadav has done, you can also do. So that is omnipotence for you. God is all powerful and media and technology is giving that power to you. Omniscience, you can see everything. With all the people who are potential citizen journalists across the world, there is so much that is being seen. Now with God's power in your hand, what is most important? <coughs> Responsibility. I'll give you an example. In one of the neighboring countries of India, in Nepal, an FM station went wrong on the reporting of a riot. What was the result? Another riot. Many people died in that. That film station was closed down. Now that this gentleman from BSF became a citizen journalist, so he is a journalist per se there. And in a similar way, the man sitting in Nepal who was reading that news on FM and adding his own words to it, his intention was very nice, but he was not a rigorously trained journalist. Till date, he feels guilty that because of him, some people died. So, with citizen journalism comes a lot of responsibility. And 
there are various ways in which you can get trained. Some, you know, if you're curious, you've taken the first step towards being a journalist. You want to know more about something. If you're angry about corruption and you want to, you've recorded something, you're a potential journalist who has something of value. Now the question is, how do you get trained? There are some organizations who want to train people who want to be citizen journalists. This, for example, there's a girl, her name is Niru Yadav. This lady is now 28 years old. And when she was 17, she started making some community videos just by herself. Then she got trained by an organization, by an NGO, who gave her a 15-day training. What did Niru Yadav do? She was in Sayala village of Surendra Nagar in Gujarat. She went around asking people in a particular village, particular village that how many kilometers do you have to walk to get water to drink? So the lady is there told her, you know, her problems. Once she recorded all that, she went to the village Sarpanj and told him this is the problem. The Sarpanj said, no, there is no problem there. There is water in the village and I have all the reports. She, she, she showed him the video. See, so went there with him and he saw what she was saying was right. And he made a whole system due to which water came to that village. So now, what Miru Yadav has done is that she's changed the lives of the place for the better. Has she broken the barrier? Yes, she was not a trained journalist. She was not even properly educated. And now she's making more and more videos and changing people's lives. So these are things, a lot of you, especially in the youth, you know, you feel that you can change things. You actually can. You may be an engineer, you may be an arts graduate, you may be studying economics, but inside you, there is a journalist. And if you have technology with you, now with technology, there's a great amount of democratization that has come. I'll give you an example. Do you know this lady who's coming on the screen? Just Childhood photographs, and then because she passed away, this was the report that was being shown on television. But this kind of report came several hours later. The news broke on Twitter with a hashtag Amy Dead. Right? This is the famous singer Amy Winehouse. A rebel in her dressing, a rebel in her lyrics a rebel in her works, anti-establishment, and the youth loved her, right? But when she died, the first confirmation did not come from a journalist. It took maybe a couple of hours before the journalist could confirm. But before that, about 20 million people, two crores, had already been writing on the hashtag Amy Dead. So this is what is happening now. You saw this. Now, this shows that even before the establishment of the journalists can sometimes react because they have to actually find out what happened, how it happened, has it really happened, has something gone wrong, are there sensitivities here? Before that, many people who knew, who were not journalists, <coughs> said it out in UK that Amy Winehouse is dead. Now compare this with the situation in Jalalitha's case in Tamil Nadu. She was a very popular leader and the moment the first news came on Twitter that she is seriously ill, the first call I made to Tamil Nadu was to a friend who was very close to her and she said, look Akash, she is no more but they will take time to announce it. So as a journalist, me and several other people who came to know about it did not tweet that Jalita is no more. Because having report from, reported from Tamil Nadu, I knew very well that if instantly news, news comes out, there will be mass suicides after that. She has such a following. In Tamil Nadu, be it Karunanidhi, be it Jalita, they are demigods. If there's anybody from that side of the world, you know it very well. You have temples of these leaders, and even Rajnikanth for that matter. So this news was broken over the next 14 hours, 16 hours. You know, people first had to accept that this could actually happen and then, and even then suicide should play, but much less. So this is the responsibility that the citizen journalist will have. Uh, there are a lot of things that you can do. And 
a citizen journalist, not only in the sense that you can produce your own stuff, but also in many ways you are journalists as consumers also. When you see news which is not up to the mark, then switch off that television, go to some other channel who's doing sensible work. Now that I'm outside uh, that 20 years of bubble and just two months into it, I can see so much of wonderful work that has been coming up on YouTube, that is being spread around by Snapchat, by WeChat, and there's so many ways of talking now, Facebook, Twitter. Today, you are the ones who, are, who will decide for the future what media is going to look like. And the more you choose better stuff, the better you will get. For example, in UK, they, they can't do substandard programs in news especially. Because of two reasons. Number one is there is some, some there's an organization called of Ofcom who will, if, if there's a single complaint, they will start looking into it and if required to solve the program completely, will start up to the mark. Or if it's not, or if it's fake news, in quotes, right, or something not credible. In India, we still are waiting for that kind of an organization. And number two, people switch off very fast from that. Recently, BBC did an experiment, and just like the way you were sitting here, they took about 200 people. And, uh, you know, uh, in news, you have programs which are really not, not worth watching, so I'll not name those television channels, but you all know, and I know, right? So they asked XTV. How many people watch XTV, which does really bad programming? I won't use that word, right? So most of the people said, "No, no, we don't watch it. We don't watch it." And they gave a separate questionnaire to all 12 of them. And then there, the most popular channel was that. In, in when they were quietly writing it down, they said, "Yes, yes, we watch it." When you ask them face to face, they're not watching it. So this is, you know, when you see something is, in, is, is actually about base of human instincts. <coughs> Move ahead of that. What is taking you higher? That is what you can promote. Also, how many people here think that in, in your life sometime you would perhaps tweet or put something on Facebook that you know, really gives you a tag of citizen journalism the way Tej Bahadur Yadav did, what that girl Neeru Rathod has done in Gujarat. Do you think you could actually do that? How many people would actually record something of value and put it on Facebook, Twitter, or one of these social medias? Okay. And why would you do that? What is the motive? If you have in mind, have you have ever thought something that, you know, I, I, I can do that maybe. This is what should, you know, everybody should come to know about it. Because we want to change. We, because we want, we don't like the system the way it's existing today. There was a man on the border, he said, I'm working so much, I'm going to get food from the country. And the government is sending the government of India is sending that food right here up to the post. But then, after that report was aired, when it went across Facebook to everybody, there were voices from inside Jammu and Kashmir where people said that we come there and in forces messes, we get food, Russian food, half of the market price. You know, so there was a lot of change that can actually come from this whistleblower. That's another thing. All of us are potential whistleblowers. Tomorrow you might be working with the government. Tomorrow you might be working with an organization where you think things are not right. All this can break barriers. Also, technology is helping us break more barriers. For example, today you can take any particular video or writing and suppose if it, it's, it's in a language called Aramaic or in Latin or Greek or French or Spanish, <coughs> within seconds you can get the translation. So you know what's happening. So you can actually reach out to so many civilizations across <coughs> the language barrier and they are reaching out to you. You can also reach back by replying in English or Hindi or whichever language you prefer and then technology can quickly change it 
translate it into their language. Of course, you have got to be careful there because there are pitfalls. Also, to take this ahead, would you believe that within an earthquake coming in America, within three seconds, the report goes out? Because it's not done by human beings. It's being done by quake bots, quake robots. What do they do? Suppose there's a 3.9 or 4.9 on Richter scale earthquake. The moment it comes, the algorithms will quickly convert it <coughs> and you get a written a script and that goes to the people. Now, I have a little bit of problem with that. Some people will say that it's so good that technology is so fast. Journalists can actually then go and do the real work and go to the ground and report about it, get information first and instantly go and report. But then there are times when all of these human sensitivities come in, where you have to be extremely careful. So where to use this technology, how far and how fast it is going, is again, that's something you and I choose. In India, I'll say one more thing. Khan Banega Karodpati, how many people have seen it? Okay, where was the original idea? Where did, where did it come from? Who wants to be a millionaire? Was the idea built in India? No. The idea was made by somebody who was doing absolutely nothing, sitting idle for maybe six months. And then he kept thinking about an idea, kept developing it, discussed with friends, kept developing it. And he came up with a format which not, not only gave him big money inside his own country, but then he make, made formats and sold it to practically 30, 40 countries of the world, at least initially, and perhaps more. Uh, Big Boss, how many people have seen it? That's very less. It's supposed to be seen popular. Okay, what is your real program? Big Brother, where Shilpa Shetty went, right, and what? Again, a program which was conceived outside. We bought the rights to it and we sort of, you know, took it ahead to make a popular program in India. A fair part of that program's earnings will have to go to the gentleman who has a copyright for it. Why are we in television and in general a nation of imitators? We've been free for over half a century now. Because over the last many years, when we were ruled by somebody else, our spirit of adventure, our spirit of innovation has disappeared. And in a nation's life, 60, 70 years is not huge. You are the generation, we are the people, together we have to start bringing that feeling back again. How many people are into adventure sports in India today? How many people have gone into mountaineering here? How many people have paragliding? Good, I'm happy. Things are changing. <laughs> River rafting? Oh, what of you? Where? Rishikesh. So practically everybody's gone to Rishikesh. Maybe in groups. The way, the way you're sitting right now. But very nice. Because this is something that is breaking barriers. Beta ghar se nikalna nahi. Kitte baje wapis aoge. Saat baje ya, you're not home. It's already dark. Yeah, these are all things which protect you. But then you have to run from safety. A ship in the harbor is safe. Very safe. But that's not what it is made for. It is made to sail. 